So uh, without further ado, I'm going to invite our first speaker to come to this uh, podium and uh, address you, and that's Hugh Saunders, who's the Director of Networks uh, at uh, Network Infrastructure at uh, uh, Ofcom, and uh, he's going to address us on the issue of uh, analog telephony and digital switch. Hugh. Good morning. Um, if you were here last year, you would have heard me give a presentation on much the same subject. The good news is I've got some new slides. The bad news is the message is still essentially the same, but I am going to provide some updates in terms of progress. So, what are we talking about? Essentially, um, I'll be talking about the PSN switch off, uh, why it's happening, what's happening, and the technical detail behind it, uh, and outlining the migration process that will affect the provision of over-the-top services, including telecare services. Um, there's a number of different factors affecting the overall migration timeline. I'll touch on those. Uh, and in, specifically, I'll touch on, uh, and this is not an advert, but it's, it's uh, an example of the way that BT is obviously one of the biggest players in, in, in the overall telecoms environment, is engaging with consumers and others uh, and providing uh, examples of their, their marketing communication program. Uh, the last part will be the update, which is really associated with uh, both the uh, clarity of the timeline, but also, more importantly, the testing pro program that is now in place, and specifically BT's Digital Services Lab, with a few concluding remarks. So, what is happening and why? Essentially, uh, as I outlined last year, uh, the PSDN, the Public Switch Telephone Network, that provides analog, analog telephony, is approaching end of life. Systems are obsolescent, uh, costs are increasing, and the providers who are currently uh, using those systems and providing the service are, are signaling their intention to retire it by 2025 at the latest. Uh, they will be moving to voice over IP, which fundamentally means they'll be moving to a broadband connection that will treat calls like any other uh, data uh, session, uh, and that will be both over the existing copper and fiber connections as well. These Voice services are already widely in use. Uh, most bis businesses use them, and indeed some consumers use them, though they don't know it. That's because they're actually uh, delivered by something called emulation of the PSTN. Um, there's a couple of mainstream providers of services who are already using this technique uh, at the moment, and consumers don't necessarily uh, uh, need to know about that. Uh, the, point, uh, the point that I would make is that that's now regarded as an interim step to full voice over broadband. Um, and that's something that will require further changes for some consumers down the line. Um, migration will be voluntary for now, but forced migration will inevitably be part of the program at the end of the, uh, each individual provider's specific timetable. Those dates will vary. There is no UK-wide date other than the likelihood of that hard cutoff in 2025. I'm not going to dwell on this slide. It gives you a few uh, more metrics about the scale of the issue that's, uh, and, and, and some of the underlying issues. Um, this predominantly refers to the BT network. There's about 5,500 telephone exchanges in the broadest definition. They use quite specific standards and protocols, which are, in fact, very old now. They were established in the, the 80s. Um, and as I said, the equipment is reaching its end of life. The parts and skills to repair them are becoming very scarce. There's three major players who are facing the specific issue that I've, I'm, I'm outlining here. BT themselves, KCOM, uh, which is relevant to those of you who might come from the East Yorkshire region, uh, and also Virgin Media, who all use, utilize the same systems as BT and KCOM uh, in a network across, uh, in effect, about half of the UK. There's a single uh, major maintainer of most of this, uh, an organization called Talent, uh, and all of them are implementing their own approach to, to migration using slightly different approaches. The migration, as I note, is led by the, the, the providers themselves. Um, they've made commercial decisions to switch off the PSTN, understandably, because of the, the, the impending obsolescence. They're set in the timescales, they're communicating with their uh, own users, and also the over-the-top service providers, as in the telecare sector. Um, we expect them to protect vulnerable consumers. We also expect them to provide test facilities for equipment that might be affected, and I'll, I'll touch on that later. The one thing I will say is that, is that this throws up a whole bunch of issues. 
uh, not just for industry itself, but also for government, the regulator, and interested stakeholders. So there is a need to work together to achieve a successful outcome for everybody. How are we going about achieving that? Well, we're not sitting on our hands, I think is the simple answer to that. Um, there are a number of groups working on the issues associated with this. NICC, <coughs> I, I will apologise for the, the number of three and four letter acronyms in this. Unfortunately, telecoms is, is rife with them one way or the other. Um, but NICC is a standards body, essentially, and it is delivering standards that are related to this. It's communicating them, that's something that we're, we're supporting, and also defining high-level test approaches for the providers, both of the, 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 the comm solutions and also the over-the-top solutions to actually work around. Um, we have an industry working group that's coordinating a lot of this activity. Uh, its next meeting, indeed, is... I'm trying to work out when it is. Tomorrow, that's right. Um, we have a, a group looking at con the consumer communications. We're also communicating to government and other stakeholders, and again, I'll touch on that later. Uh, and we're, we're reviewing our rules that apply to communication providers to make sure that, that they're quite clear in terms of what, they're, what we expect of them. PSDM providers, as I said, are leading their own engagement works. I'll, I'll talk about BT's program a bit later on. They're supporting that NICC standards work. NICC doesn't exist without the PSDM providers putting people into it, and also provide the test facilities I mentioned. Hopefully, the OTT providers, and by that I mean the providers in this case of telecare solutions, both the equipment and the operators of, of, of um, alarm receiving centres, etc., should be leading their own engagement work, both with con the, the, the consumers, but also with the, the, the providers of communication services and uh, other stakeholders on how the PSDN migration might affect them. One thing to note, I, th I think it was one of the earliest slides, um, this is not something that's happening in isolation. Uh, there is an overall international trend in this direction. I've put up there a few of uh, the most obvious ones. Some are complete already. Um, as it says, they're Deutsche Telekom, which has got a number of other um, operating entities outside Germany, has already completed the migration of its customers to VoIP in, in Macedonia, Slovakia and Croatia will complete this year in Germany as well. Uh, and as it, as it shows there in, in the US, the, the similar migration is underway and will be completed by the major two providers of fixed telephony in, in, in the US, Verizon A and Skeeton T, over the next couple of years. So, what's the impact? Well, this is really the good news. Um, essentially, uh, PS, sorry, um, voice over IP service is already out there as far as some consumers in the UK is, uh, um, are concerned, as I've already mentioned. So Sky and TalkTalk, for instance, if you're a customer of either of those, you are being delivered a PSDN emulation using a voice over IP service, and it's a good quality service. Um, when you make the full transition to voice over broadband, um, Customers will be offered new services and possibly new phone hands handsets, which will connect to a broadband router rather than to the existing master socket. Better services, more flexible services will be delivered. Um, it's got the, the underlying technology, which is referred to as session initiation protocol, has got some enhanced capabilities, better voice quality through improved codecs. Um, it is more compatible with both video and real-time text calling. Um, so generally, there is an upside to this. However, there is also a downside. There are some migration issues which we think are specific to particular consumers. For instance, those who have got um, visual impairment who may have problems in terms of connecting phones to, to, to the router rather than the master socket. And we do expect uh, communication providers to help in, that, uh, in those instances. The other downside issues are essentially, at the moment, analog telephony provides power to a, 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 an old-fashioned connected corded phone. Uh, that disappears with voice over broadband. To some extent, that doesn't really matter because cordless phones um, don't uh, actually rely upon that uh, analog transmission stroke um, line powering capability. They require mains to, 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 to work. So the reality is most consumers who've got corded phones won't notice the difference because they would lose voice services over the network in the existing circumstances as well as in future. But 
We are, and uh, we recently published our, a statement on what we think is the necessary provision for more vulnerable consumers who do rely upon um, their, their fixed line communications. So we are requiring alternative means in particular to provide access to the emergency services. Uh, that's a, a, a document that's available from our website that was published this week. We do think that um, there is a responsibility for, uh, for communication providers to identify those who are at risk, pr uh, providing clear communications to them about the implications and providing the suitable solutions to that line power initiative in particular. Unfortunately, there are more problems. Um, the PSDN was designed to support voice, but over time has grown to support a whole range of other things. Um, these are mainly um, services that, in effect, rely upon data exchange one form or another. That can be relatively simple using dual-tone multi-frequency multi or DTMF signaling, uh, the tones you hear when you're setting a call up. Or it could be devices that use modems. Um, I'm citing V21, which is a very common modem st standard, which was established many years ago. The downside risk that uh, we're basically talking about is that the new IP-based networks are really not designed to support that voice band data, as it's called. Um, there are characteristics of IP-based networks, that, such as packet loss of jitter, that may cause them to respond in unexpected ways. So those services may severely degrade, and there is already examples that, that are out there in the, uh, in the public domain about that, or stop working altogether. It was identified a long time ago. This is not a new issue. When BT started their 21CN migration in the early to mid noughties, uh, this issue was identified. Um, but the full extent of the problem and the adoption of future-proof solutions was not resolved at that time and still, in, in many ways, remains unresolved. Um, I'll talk about the results of testing at BT Labs, but I, I think the test that will be undertaken in these conditions will never be comprehensive or totally conclusive, given the full range of the, the services available and the, the, the varying characteristics. Talking to consumers and stakeholders basically about what the issues are and what the options are going forward is absolutely vital. The message I gave last year remains the same, that actually in the longer term, you should not rely upon voice band data, you should look to a fully digital solution whether that's over a fixed connection or over a wireless connection, in other words, the mobile networks, but that's the right direction of travel. Um, because of these concerns, because of these issues, we are working with a, a, a variety of, of different stakeholders. Uh, we are focusing on we, what we consider to be um, critical national infrastructure infrastructure and safety related issues, so health, telecare alarms, I'm working, we're working with a variety of bodies. The finance sector is actually probably the, uh, another area of focus because payment systems terminals, the small card authorization terminals you get in, in a lot of retailers, they use modems and again, there, there are issues associated with it. But there's a long list of other sectors including transport, utilities, etc., which you can see there. So, um, this is the overall timeline. Um, there is testing underway, as I, as I mentioned. We're setting out our migration expectations. We're continuing with our industry engagement. Over the next 18 months or so, we'll see the new services being launched more, more, more widely. Um, we'll be monitoring what the, the CPs are doing uh, and making sure that appropriate safeguards are in place. Now, one of the key things there is BT is a, a mainstream supplier of wholesale inputs to other su suppliers, so-called wholesale line rental, and that will be withdrawn over a rolling period that probably will be a hard cutoff in 2022. So, yeah, there are a number of key dates here. I think probably the next key date is that sort of 2020 to 2022 period when volatility migration will be picking up and then uh, the WLR service will, will um, be withdrawn. And so, in effect, the start of forced migration will probably be a, a couple of years after that with the hard cutoff of 2025. So... What's happening? Um, this is a, a, uh, a demonstration of the depth of, of BT's engagement with the various customers. At the top of the, 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 the triangle, or the, the, the pyramid, is, is the priority suppliers, who probably amount to about 50-odd. Uh, and and uh, BT, as an example, you know, our, our, our other communication providers are going through the same process. 
um, are engaging with these people direct, have got personal relationships, would develop. There, there are a number of BT people here today um, supporting industry and reaching out to, to a number of organizations at, through, the, through the show, et cetera. At the bottom of the triangle is the residential customers, uh, and clearly they'll be talking to them through their email and many um, campaigns, outbound calls, et cetera. Um, but it, fundamentally, that's where the hard work really starts in terms of managing e each individual um, migration program. Um, in between the rest of the industry in particular, I, I will say um, BT is supporting a range of activities that, that the TSA has got with other affected trade associations. I'm thinking in particular that the, the uh, security and fire alarm uh, trade associations, they're running a series of seminars uh, we've been involved in them as well, but BT, Virgin Media and others are doing this uh, to try and reach out to um, the smaller businesses in the alarm and telecare industries uh, who operate at predominantly at a local level. This slide shows some of these communications from BT. Um, it's got a brochure it's recently launched about what it's doing overall. Um, there's two examples of um, content that is put into trade association uh, publication from both the BSIA and the TSA, uh, well, sorry, and, and FIRE as well. So, so in effect, that, that, that covers uh, uh, the type of engagement I've, I've just mentioned. More importantly, in some ways, um, they've also launched their own testing program. Uh, the Digital Services Lab was opened in, on the 5th of July. Unfortunately, I, I had to miss out on, on, on visiting on that occasion. Uh, and, and since then, they, they, they have welcomed a number of the major alarm and telecare suppliers. Uh, those are the two sectors they're currently focusing on because, like us, they recognise that there is a safety of life issue associated with this. Um, they expect suppliers to define their own test plans potentially around that NICC work I, I spoke about themselves and run the test themselves and draw their own conclusions, but BT is supporting them. Um, they will list who they are testing with, but they won't release uh, the full data. They rely upon those who've been tested to actually talk to their affected um, customers. Um, the TSA is working on a standardised test pack and BT is hoping that other trade associations do this, uh, the same thing. They have had a good attendance to date but is actively pushing for more people to go there and actually test their equipment. Um, so if you find a BT person here and you wish to talk to them about this, please do. Antoine, stand up. <laughs> That's your main point of contact if you can't find anybody else. So he's... he's uh, uh, coming to us tomorrow, our industry working group, to talk about this program in a bit more detail. Uh, but it clearly, you know, they've they put resources into the, the Digital Services Lab, which happens to be at the, the, the test and research facility in Ad Ad Astral Park in, um, in Suffolk. But the, the reality is, you know, that there's a lot of activity going on and it, it needs to be supported by the industry as a whole. So, broadly, that's it. Um, the migration to IP-based voice services fundamentally is inevitable. You know, it is going to happen. The, the, uh, the tide will not roll back. Uh, it will offer a better telephony experience for, for, for many people, but there is a downside risk. There are some vulnerable consumers who need to be protected, and some non-voice services will be affected in ways that are very, very difficult to, 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 to predict. Um, that is a position that Ofcom as a regulator has to take due uh, consideration of. We are working with all of the players in the marketplace at the moment. We will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. But I think the message that we are giving to this industry, like the message we're giving to every other industry that will be affected, is you ultimately will manage your own fate. Um, there is an opportunity to work with the, the telecoms industry to understand the scale of the problem uh, and then also to work with the communication industry and your own suppliers to actually work out what the right solutions are, which could be a minor tweak to existing systems, existing products, existing services, or could be a wholesale replacement of the units that are in place with other technologies. Those other technologies are now widely available. You know, fundamentally, I regard this looking forward as a subset of the overall Internet of Things issue. In other words, you can... A devise a variety of connectivity solutions that will deliver relatively low bandwidth but immediate connections on an immediate connectivity on a universal basis or near universal basis 
at a very low cost that does not rely upon the PSDN network. I think the bottom line is that's got to be the right solution for the longer term, and that's what we're encouraging <coughs> all of the participants in all of the industries that are going to be affected to think about as the long-term solution. Thank you.